Hi everyone, I'm here with you today to share with you how you can use a Nintendo Wiimote in a Phys Ed sport environment to um, log any physical activity, um, g-forces and such that are applied to it. What you can see on screen is the software that um, has been created by some very clever people that allows the Nintendo Wiimote and just the remote control, not the actual um, the game console itself, so just the remote. It allows that to connect with a computer um, via Bluetooth so that you can record um, the forces that are applied to it. And the Wiimote is very special because it has an accelerometer in there, um, much in the same way that iPhones and iPod touches do, that allow it to know where it is in time and space. So as you can see, um, because I'm resting it on the table at the moment, um, there are basically minor changes to it. Uh, and they're basically um, showing you what's happening to it at this point in time. If I lift it up in the air, you can see that it changes. Move it side by side, different line will change, so it's obviously green. Um, if I move it front to back, I get a different result. Up and down, I get a different result. So it can work out the forces that are applied to it. Now, if you look, think about the G-forces along here, um, obviously the higher Gs you get, the, the greater the level of intensity is. So if you apply that to sport, then you can use it to work out um, intensity that people are working at. So imagine in a game of tennis, people, someone is wearing this in their pocket while they're playing. Um, you can work out the intensity that which they're playing at based on the G-force and how close together um, everything appears. That will give you a, a great way to um, discuss things such as energy systems and um, any training type um, situations that you need to tailor to. Etc. So what we've done in year 12 is had a student wear it in basketball uh, on their trunk. We were looking at it from the intensity angle, um, seeing how we can record whether we meet the national physical activity guidelines um, of 30 minutes of physical activity, 60 minutes of physical activity a day. Um, so by doing that, uh, we need to know that the intensity had to be of moderate intensity. So we use this to see whether we were working at moderate intensity. I'll give you a bit of an example of what it would look like as when someone um, is actually has it, is wearing it and is um, using it for recording purposes. So I'll put it in my pocket and just have a watch. Now because I've just placed it in my pocket, you can see it's the baseline figure is pretty static at the moment. When I start moving, it's going to start um, changing. So there you have it, there's just a simple analysis of me and my um, basketball five, ten seconds or whatever it was that we just recorded for. And what you can then do is go back and save it and you can actually play and play back that particular um, analysis so you can start to look at all the different things that are applying to it um, and then you can get a really rich discussion about intensities and so forth. So there's one way that you might like to use it. Um, another way that I've done it recently with a bit of a different focus was in push-ups. I had someone wear it on their back while they were completing push-ups and what it allowed us to do was determine exactly what set it was when they started to fatigue. Okay, so the reason you could do that is because there was a noticeable pattern between each of the um, push-up sets or the push-up reps and when that pattern started to break away, you could almost tell that that was the time that they started to really fatigue. So training and then all that sort of stuff could be um, surrounded around that particular amount of reps as opposed to the, the ones they got to the end with that were sort of done in poor form. Um, other ways that I've seen it used and could be used is teaching fundamental motor skills. Um, for example, if I start logging this now and I threw the Nintendo Wiimote to someone, what you're going to find is a sharp jolt, like you can see there. 
because um, that's what happens when you catch it. But if you're teaching fundamental motor skills to a kid and you tell them that they need to cup it and carry the, the force through to their legs like you do, imagine you're trying to catch an egg, you would see a change in um, hopefully their, their catching skills. So the idea of catching them becomes, well, how, how close to flat can you get a Nintendo Wiimote? We don't want to see it like that when you try and catch. You want to see it more so like that. Uh, and then you're trying to teach, obviously, um, some better catching skills in there. Think about the, um, a couple of the classic force summation lab laboratory activities when teaching biomechanics. You know, have people throw a Nintendo Wiimote using only certain parts of the body um, without you know allowing lateral rotation of the body and gradually building up the muscles that you can involve to see how that affects distance and the force that you can create so that's definitely you know a variety of ways you can use it um, and I'm sure that people sitting there now will think about how they can use it and if you can um, I'd like to have you share it with me thank you